to start with a kind of a broader, uh, broader view of property and property rights. Um, where do the, I mean, Rand has a particular view of, of why property rights are so crucial and, and why, in a sense, of the essential right derived from the right to life. But historically, where does, where does the right to property intellectually, where does it come from? I mean, who are the, who are the key figures? And then uh, how is it conceptualized kind of in, in let's say, in the, in the founding era? Uh, uh, it's a great question. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, yeah, so uh, in the modern era, in the modern era, I, I would count you know from the approximately you know the 17th century up to today. Um, you know, it's large. You know, the people. If you said you know who's the primary intellectual source for our understanding of property today, I think people would rightly identify John Locke. Um, <laughs> and John Locke. Uh, he he moved beyond a lot of the, kind of the initial errors of um, of the founders of natural rights philosophy, the modern theory of natural rights philosophy, Hugo Grotius and Samuel Pufendorf, and really situated the right to property within um, an understanding of why go you know government needs to protect it and why government needs to be limited just to the protection of the rights to life, liberty, and property. And he conceptualized it properly as a result of that. He saw you know it's fitting within this trinity of life, liberty, and property. So how did he connect it to life? I mean, how did he see kind of the Rand's view that, that you know, we have to produce in order to survive and therefore, you know, that that make that connection to life? Um, I, and unfortunately, no, uh, um, at least not explicitly. So, I mean, there's inklings of it because he was on the right track and he was very reality oriented and he was very, you know, he's really an incredible, you know, um, philosopher and, you know, very ahead of his time. And, um, but, you know, he, he, he was still shackled by, you know, his, you know, commitment to religion and, and they could not bridge the, the Isaac gap. He couldn't, yeah. they, they did not know how to get it started. So what did it mean that you had a right to life? And so, uh, so from that perspective, you know, they really just thought that, well, you know, just God basically says you have, you have a right to life. Um, and that's what starts it all. And they, and Hugh Grotius also ha has this kind of notion as well as kind of implicit that you do have to kind of produce and act uh, uh, in order. This is why you have a right to liberty because you have a right to life. And so you act in order to sustain your life and in acting, you make things and you make those things, you know, Locke's famous phrase, you mix your labor, which was his metaphor for productive activities. And that's what then creates the, the right to those things or right to property. And you can see it's kind of implicitly running throughout. And this is one of Rand's, you know, great insights and contributions of her, of her many, many of them yeah. is that she actually recognized the, the key issue that they all missed, which is that it's man's rational mind that is really guiding everything and that it is the rational mind and the values that man identifies through the use of his reason that actually is the basis of, of, of property as serving one's life. So is the fact that they didn't realize this, um, did that result in a kind of a, in a sense, a materialistic view of property? Um, somewhat. It, 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 I don't know if it's materialistic or intrinsic, okay. um, you know, and the, and the two are similar in some ways, but they're still distinct from each other. Um, you know, and this comes out of, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the initial inability to objectively identify and ground this concept. And they, so they, so natural rights has the sense of that it's natural in the sense that it's intrinsic in you as a person. Um, and, and, and this is, you know, where you get all these people who struggle with well, what does it mean then when you delegate your rights and how do you lose your rights if it's intrinsic in you um, and things of this sort. And this is, you know, Rand's incredible achievements also in epistemology that she recognized, no, these are concepts, these are principles that serve our life. And, you know, and, so, uh, and, but because they, because they had this intrinsic view of rights being instantiated in you in some way, shape or form as part of your metaphysical essence, so to speak, as a rational being, um, you know, it did orient them ultimately toward kind of a more physicalist conception of rights at times. But, but then again, you know, Locke also had in his, in his theories, you know, inklings of, well, no, it applies broader than that. Property can be extended to this, even in the second treatise. He talks about how well even the the when he's describing his his, um, his theory of property in his chapter called property, is chapter five. He's uh, he's giving examples of property, and he even says the prop that the grass that is bit by the horse of my servant is my property. 
And that's a really, really incredible, insightful insight that, you know, that you can alienate and transfer down through these rights. Um, and that, you know, you can have moral claims and legal claims that extend out beyond you to things that you've entered into agreements with people over. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, he was, so they were, they were, they were, they were slowly kind of gravitating toward it, but it really took Rand's, you know, uh, the, you know, uh, uh, theory of objectivity, her, you know, her, and, um, and her real key insight about reason as man's basic means of survival is kind of, kind of breaking the Gordian knot that they had all been struggling with for so long and fully justifying and explaining what is property. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.